Hey there, Arconiacs. It's time to break down the latest episode of Only Murders in the Building, Season 3, Episode 5, I Love. I loved a lot about this episode, and I'm going to go through each of the three storylines at a time first, Charles and Joy. It starts with Charles unable to question Joy about how her lipstick ended up in Ben Glenroy's dressing room after a few days of Oliver and Mabel asking for an update. Joy is one of my favorite characters this season. She's got so much energy, and it sucks that they seem to be broken up and likely not getting back together. Not until Charles gets some professional help. We know he will likely try to get back into Joy's good graces, because we see him with fish in his hands at the gooseberry, I'm assuming as a present to Joy. We also get the return of Sass Pataki, who's dating Jan. I think that it's the wildest thing of the show, actually, is uh, Sass dating Jan. I, what? Why? But Sass telling Charles that he needs to go to therapy is very real and honest. He's got issues, lifelong issues. People are often assholes because of their insecurities, and I'm glad he did come to the realization that he is afraid to be happy. I understand 100% where Joe was coming from, and I agree she should have broken up with him. Charles is self-absorbed. I've always thought he was a bit of an asshole. He never tips. He thinks of himself as some big shot. He's got a big head, and I know he does love Joy, and I wish he talked about how he accidentally proposing to her in a different way. It was not the way to go about it. He's got lots of issues, and I think now that he's single, he's going to have more time to focus on the podcast and who killed Ben Glenroy. A little bit to Charles' defense, I will add that when he initially questioned Joy, yeah, I would have been upset with the question, but I don't think her response was warranted. He didn't tell her, I think you're a killer, just that someone wrote something on Ben's mirror in your lipstick. How did it get there? It would seem to be more realistic to just say why, but I understand they need attention, and Andrea does some amazing acting. We also get a storyline of Mabel and Tobert on their stakeout. I try to be a positive person, but I need to go on a little rant. Hate me for it if you want. Tobert. I think he's a piece of shit. He literally lied to Mabel to get her on a date without asking. It's a scumbag move and completely wrong and if framed as okay because he's hot with dreamy eyes and a smoky voice. He lied to Mabel, had her meet him under false pretense when the only thing he really wanted was getting a date with her. He even ordered food for her. She has drinks with this guy who's still a suspect and it seems very much unlike her from my perception. I don't like Mabel being in different relationships, kissing someone every season. And if they talk about not being grounded because he travels and doesn't have a partner to keep him around. But thinking about it more recently is why we see Mabel in a wedding dress. Well, I'm going to be perturbed. I'm going to be even more perturbed if they say they will get married and then don't. I feel like the relationship feels shoehorned in, even though they do have some great chemistry together. I don't like how it's being portrayed. Tobert is not a good person to me, and his flirting is trying to get a kiss from Mabel because they do it in movies. He just doesn't seem like a good guy. There's only two ways I'd be down with this working. Uh, number one, if it happens at the end of the season where someone dies at the wedding, hopefully him. But even then, I just want her to exist without all these people in her life. Why can't she just have a platonic friend? All three of the podcasters have romantic relationships this season, and I think focusing on one is enough for me. The second way I'd be okay with this is if she's honeypotting him. She did say that she's following a lead just before kissing him, so getting his guard down would be a way to get to him to admit to something wrong, but who knows, that's still a little iffy to me. But if so, work with what you got. During their date, because it wasn't a stakeout, Jonathan is seen a hugging man giving him an envelope, and the guy slips him a piece of paper and then they leave. Tarber states that he knows this man as Dr. C, and he's the kind of doctor that'll fill any prescription you want. Even though Jonathan and this Dr. C were looking hella suspicious, I don't know why Jonathan wouldn't say hi to Mabel or wave back. I think that Jonathan was only getting a strong allergy medicine as he stated before that he's deathly allergic to cats and him and Howard seem to be going along strong. It's just another misdirect. 
my favorite parts of this episode are definitely between Loretta and Oliver. Loretta's pig snort is so cute. Meryl Streep is a gem and I have a crush on her. The date was cute. I love how Oliver lost his tooth and instead of trying to get it put back or getting crazy and manic about it, he just rode with it and throughout the night they had a good time. I'm sure he will get it replaced but I'm not gonna lie, I would love if he just had a missing tooth for the rest of the show. The two are a great couple and I don't want their relationship to end. A little more into theory territory, I think Loretta talking about her oven could be a little hint to her being a mother. And please, someone tell me, have you ever cooked a pork chop in a microwave? I could never, but maybe it's more common than I know. During the date, we learned that Loretta and Ben had an argument on the set 30 minutes before the show started, and in that time she called Ben a fucking pig. Ben said that she was obsessed with him and that she wormed her way into the show. A theory that I kind of had here. This is supposed to make her look like a crazed fan, especially after the notebook that Oliver finds in her apartment, but we know that it's more likely that they're related. We also learned that Charles walks on stage and witnesses this fight and then punches Ben in the face. Joy says this is why she went to his dressing room to fix the bruising on his face. Loretta then insinuates that even his brother Dickie thought he was an asshole and I hope we get a conversation with Loretta about that argument to clarify all these relationships. I hope we get it soon. I have a few issues with this whole situation. Ben was punched on the left side of his face by Charles and that blemish that we see is on the right. Now that could just be a mistake, but it seems like a glaring mistake to me. It also looks as if this is what Charles was talking about when he told Ben to stay away from her. She told me what you did. Now I'm guessing it would be what the conversation was about, but even if it wasn't, whoever Charles was talking about should be a suspect for whatever Ben did to them, and I think he should have brought this up at least to Mabel by now. It feels like Charles is holding back information that likely would be pertinent to figuring out who killed him. I'm going to look over everything in Loretta's apartment with a fine tooth comb, but I don't think there's much there. If there is, I'll make a separate video for it, but I will say that I did like that the picture was of Loretta when she was younger with her mother, and I thought it's cute that she had pigtails then and she still rocks them now. They look good on her. The notebook that Oliver found had a lot in it, but I believe that it was a lot of nonsense or jokes that are irrelevant. The only thing that matters is that Loretta had this notebook. Interestingly though, Ben Ben Glenroy is front and center in most of the pictures, but his brother Dickie appears to be in every single one of the pictures also. This makes it seem as if Dickie could be the person that she's following. Now this could be possible, but even there's some things off with this. Yes, Dickie's in every picture with Ben, but it's not just pictures. There are some pages that just consist of articles about Ben and has nothing to do with Dickie. And it wouldn't even be something that Dickie would be involved in like Ben's personal relationships. He's got nothing to do with that. This leads me to believe that this is still a Ben Glenroy notebook or at the very most a notebook of Ben and Dickie. If Loretta is Dickie's mom and not Ben's mom, does Dickie not know? Ben said during the argument, Ben said he thinks that she's obsessed with him, not Dickie. It would seem as if Dickie does know or did know but if she is his mother and not Ben's, why would they hide it, especially now that Ben is dead? It makes me believe either they are both brothers, the only thing that logically makes sense is that they are both Loretta's child, or only Ben is. If it's just Dickie, there's no reason to hide this relationship. Because Ben wants you to, it doesn't make sense. But I'm sure we'll figure it out one way or another. It could go many ways, but in the end, I don't think Loretta's parentage or lack thereof will be related to who killed Ben Glenroy. If you want to watch my unified theory video about my thoughts on everyone's role in the story and who killed Ben Glenroy, I'll leave a link in the description. I released it just before this recent episode and nothing in it has been disproved. Some of it seems a little more likely. Overall, I'm enjoying this season very much. It's a lot of fun and the next episode is taking place at the Gooseberry Theater.
possibly during a storm, just like in Death Rattle, giving me some Death Rattle vibes. I'm begging them to give me all of the Phantom of the Opera references here, and I'm hoping they do. But either way, please let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of this episode? If this hurricane misses me, the next episode will be on who I think will die at the end of the season. Once again, thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you on the rooftop. Thank you.